I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a deep breath and readying ourselves for the pain, as I rank my top 10 worst Armored Core 6 missions. Last week we took a look at my top 10 favorites, link in the description. This week it's the flip side. Those missions that when I play them, I just think I could be anywhere else right now. Is there an annoying instant fail mechanic? Does it have extremely strict S rank conditions? Does it have you hunting down hidden objectives, or is it just a bit boring? Let's find out. Like last week, no boss fight missions will be included for the sake of variety, so let's jump right in. My top 10 worst Armored Core 6 missions ranked. Let me know your least favorite down below, and please enjoy the last of my Armored Core videos. At number 10, we have Historic Data Recovery, a Chapter 3 mission taking place in the now abandoned Engabret Tunnel. Earlier in the chapter, we took on a mission here that involved destroying a generator, which triggered a massive coral surge that wiped out everything within the vicinity. Now, Air is asking us on her behalf to head back and collect some data from the ruined mechs inside. And that's it, that's the mission. There's no overarching danger beyond a couple of wrecks that were brought online thanks to the coral, and your goal is to just fly around the map and scan the various locations you're pointed towards. You can find a few optional mechs for some extra credits, as aside from that, you're not getting paid for this brief survey. And for some people, this type of mission works. A breather from the main campaign acting as a coral lore dump for anyone interested in the inner workings of the substance. I'm just not one of those people. After coming from Nightfall Raven and the Honest Brute mission, doing some data recovery feels like the calm before the storm and breaks the flow of the game at the worst point, as all the factions are coming together to fight the Ice Worm, but first you've got to survey a cave for the floating voice in your head for no real benefit. This mission could be removed from the game and nobody would even notice, but it's also such a non-entity that I can't be bothered to put it higher on today's list if that makes sense. At number 9, we have Eliminate V7 from early on in Chapter 3. We're ordered by the Rubicon Liberation Front to take down one of the Vespers, Swinburne, who's been causing a lot of trouble. Now the end of this mission with the fight against the boss is actually really fun. Swinburne has a decent level of aggression, his mech uses weapons you won't be used to at this point like the stun baton, and his character comes across perfectly with his voice lines and mannerisms. Plus, if you spare him midway through the fight, you get an optional battle against the Liberation Front assassin Rokumonsen, who only speaks in haiku. Now, the reason this mission lands on my worst list is the preceding level prior to the boss fight. Something you all need to know about me, I'm not a big fan of stealth. Specifically, stealth in games that aren't built for the mechanic. I love Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3 for example, but ask me to go through a destroyed city with my gigantic mech and not get spotted by enemies, and you might just scare me away. You have to make it from one side of the city to the other without being spotted by any of the guard mechs throughout, from those in the air to the ground control. You best be using your scan radar to keep track of all the dangers, but even then, you're gonna miss a few. You can attack and destroy enemies like usual, but you have to pick them off one by one, and if an enemy has you in their sights for too long, they'll snap a pick and you'll instantly lose the mission. Once you have a dedicated route through the city, it's not the worst experience in the game, but it's also not something I particularly enjoy. Sometimes a mechanic can really sour me on wanting to replay a mission, and forced stealth in an armored core game is certainly one of those moments. At number 8, we have Attack the Refueling Base, another Chapter 3 mission that I have personal beef with. If you aim to complete this mission normally, you're going to have a fairly enjoyable time. The map is vast, with four very distinct areas to explore. The opening complex, which you can tackle by taking the main road, or flying around the left side towards the fuel tanks, which you can destroy for extra credits. There's the bridge crossing, where beneath you'll find a few combat log sniper mechs that you'll want to take out for completion's sake. Then the cliffs, where you'll have to avoid flying MTs with surprising accuracy, all leading to the final refueling base, where the objective and the upcoming boss fight take place. It's got the markings of a great mission. 
except if you're trying to S-rank it. I don't know about everyone else, but this is one of the hardest missions I've tried to S-rank in the game, as it's fully dependent on time taken and damage received. You have to take out multiple high-profile target MTs before you reach the boss, such as the sniper MTs and the PCA mech near the start of the level. But if you reach the boss fight and take remotely any amount of damage, that's enough to knock you back down to an A rank. The Ectromoy pair, while not particularly difficult as a standard fight, are a pain in the ass when S-ranking, because one of them has AoE effects on their plasma attacks, and the other one always catches me off guard with their melee. It's a skill issue on my part, but I'm just so fucking sick of replaying this mission, even after copying all the guides online to perfection, that I've just started to hate it by default. If only Armored Core 6 could be more upfront about what constitutes an S rank, maybe I'd be having less of a struggle. At number 7, we have Escort the Weaponized Mining Ship, found in Chapter 1 during New Game Plus Plus. This is the first of the new All Mind missions, which you can choose in place of destroying the Strider like you normally would. Here, you're promised the chance to escort the mining ship to its destination, only when you arrive, that promise is shattered, as you immediately see the Strider exploding in the distance. That's right, it was a canon event, and instead the mission becomes a simple defend yourself from incoming enemies. You're then assaulted by a combination of those bone wheels and mechs that you can find in Chapter 4's Reach the Coral Convergence. There, they were enemies holding combat logs. Here, they're enemies looking to destroy your AC. And as you're fighting in a flat area with no real elevation to catch your breath, your battle options are limited. I enjoy these enemies in their natural habitat of Institute City, but take them out of that area and they immediately become tough and irritating to take down. Having three or four wheels on you at the same time, while the other mechs stay just out of range as per their AI's instructions as you slowly lose AP, is a frustrating experience. But really, it's the promise that this mission's title had that lands it on this list. I just really wanted to escort the Strider. The possibilities of being atop the mech, defending the eye from enemies looking to destroy it, excited me, as unlike other defense missions in the game which we'll get to later, the eye could have fought back and helped us, creating a more balanced experience. So not getting that, and instead getting a generic destroy the enemies objective was just such a real shame. At number 6, we have Stop the Secret Data Breach, a Chapter 2 mission found on New Game Plus if you betray the Red Guns in the Dam in Chapter 1. Here, you're forced to stop a Dozer data breach by exploring the inner portion of Grid 086. Now, the hacking part of the mission isn't brutal by any means. You use your scan ability to figure out the locations of the mechs, then you just have to make your way to them, opening various doors, wrapping back around, and taking out any MTs that happen to get in your way, including a Baus tetrapod that has a combat log. The time limit works well on your first playthrough of the level, as you won't know any of the locations you have to go to, while on an S rank mission, knowing the path and taking out the big baddies as quickly as possible is extremely satisfying. Nah, this mission's issue is its boss, because we get a rematch with Gun5 Iguazu after he wants revenge for the incident at the dam, which on its own is fine. Wouldn't bother me in the slightest, he's not the most exciting AC in the game to fight, and he keeps his distance, but you know what, I'm cool with that. It's when All Mind's mechs show up to destroy us both that I just find myself shutting off. Outside of the opening mission where the stealth mechs first appear, which was super fun and unique, I found myself more and more loathed to face them as the game goes on. The snipers are too strong, and the melee units always have shields that make them a pain to defeat if you don't have any pulse weapons. Sure, you can work with Iguazu, but when I'm trying to S-rank this mission only to accidentally hit him with my melee attack, causing him to refocus his aggro onto me, yeah, it's just not a particularly fun experience. The only plus side of this mission is that it has one of the best background tracks in the game, with this weird jazzy beat that befits Carla's attitude perfectly. A true bop, a diamond in the rough, and currently, my outro theme. Oh my god, it's March already? And we're getting closer to my goal of 20,000 subscribers by the summer of 2024! Insert obligatory YouTuber, look at how many of you aren't subscribed comment here. 
If by the end of the video you enjoy what you watch, consider parrying that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my future videos. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. At number 5, we have Prisoner Rescue, a chapter 1 mission found in New Game Plus if you choose to betray the Red Guns at the Dam. Here, you're hired by the Liberation Front to help escort their chopper through the contaminated city, picking up three key Liberation Front members as they go. I want to emphasize that there isn't anything wrong with an escort mission. When done well, I think they can be a lot of fun, and Prisoner Rescue's variant of the mission is honestly pretty well designed. Taking multiple attempts to get the perfect run through the city without damaging the helicopter too much is an art in itself. And the battle against Gun 2 Nile, where you have to defend the helicopter, can have a lot of strategy, as it's possible to destroy the reinforcement ships before they drop MTs to back him up. Even getting the S rank is pretty straightforward, as you have to complete the mission with minimal damage to your escort craft. But I simply don't enjoy these types of missions. I'm having my most fun when I'm the one in control of the flow of battle, when I can press forwards and take out enemies without needing to worry that there's a liability further behind. And the helicopter in this mission is exactly that. It takes so long to hang around in the air, collecting the Liberation members that need rescuing, that you think, doesn't their pilot have any sort of training? It just stays there, doing absolutely nothing, and you're left doing the brunt of the work. They couldn't have attached a single gun or two to the helicopter for self-defense. Really? And that part near the third objective is basically a guaranteed fail your first time through because the helicopter will get decimated by the cannons that you won't know are there until you've boosted over to them. It's not a badly designed mission, but like I said in an earlier entry, there are some mechanics I simply do not vibe with regardless of game and genre, and this style of escorting is one of them. At number 4, we've got Heavy Missile Launch Support and Take the Uninhabited Floating City, found in Chapter 3 and Chapter 5 respectively. Now the reason I'm ranking both of these missions together is because they both focus on the exact same mechanic, Tower Defense Missions. In Heavy Missile Launch Support, you have three missiles to protect, two smaller ones on the left and right, and the main central missile, and it's up to the player to take down every enemy that approaches. My main frustration comes from how weak the secondary missiles are, so even when I'm purposefully going for a no missiles destroyed run, it's impossible without memorizing every single enemy position from the start. But Take the Uninhabited Floating City is far more frustrating. The Xylem only has one weak point, and they throw everything in the kitchen sink at you in an attempt to destroy its shields. There was nothing more frustrating than getting to the sniper segment, as their guns take out so much health from the objective with every shot, and you don't have the damage or the movement speed to keep track of all five of the enemies as you boost around. Or how about that part near the end with the homing missiles aimed directly at the Xylem that can't be blocked in regular gameplay unless you have the pulse shield? It's so arbitrarily irritating that I just think, why would I ever want to get better at this mission? I want those S ranks, but it's missions like these that make me wonder if it's truly worth the hassle. I like defending objectives, but I don't like the feeling of being overwhelmed even when I can tell I'm doing things right, or as best I can with the weapons given. Garla, you're a queen, but please stop hiring me to defend your bullshit. At number 3, we have Underground Exploration Depth 1. The first Chapter 4 mission that sees us descending down the main elevator shaft of Watchpoint Alpha as we attempt to neutralize the Depenthes artillery platform. Anyone who watched my boss ranking video from last week knows that the Nepenthes is literally my least favorite boss in the game. Because unlike the Strider, which takes the concept of a boss that is also a level and executes it flawlessly, the Nepenthes platform executes a bland and repetitive level challenge of falling down platforms while dodging plasma missiles and a few lasers. Your AC's movement in fall just never feels fast enough, as you're hoping the next drop will be the last, only to realize you've got another 15 or so drops before you reach the bottom of the level. They try to trick you into thinking this will be fun, with the elevator going down, getting blocked as you have to fight some MTs and reopen the shutters, that's cool, 
But then, as said, it just becomes a bland, repetitive, boring slog down to the depths as you land on platforms, wait for lasers to finish firing, drop to the next platform, avoid an enemy that's targeting you with a laser, get impatient so you drop down and take laser damage from the Nepenthes because who cares, rinse and repeat until you reach the bottom and kill the artillery platform with a couple of melee attacks. Ugh. It sets off Chapter 4 to such a bland start, which is a shame because the rest of the main missions here are far more exciting and really get the blood pumping for what'll soon be the setup for the climax of the game. But there are two other missions I've got more personal beef with that take my top spots. At number two, we have Eliminate the Enforcement Squads, a Chapter 3 mission that can be chosen in place of the Cataphract boss fight. This was the mission I chose on my first playthrough, meaning I had to face the PCA enforcement squads and the heavy cavalry unit at the end of the level. This mission for me fails on multiple fronts. Firstly, it's an incredibly brutal skill check for anyone attempting to complete it 100% on their first try, as there's an optional combat log that involves facing off against AC Candle Ring Ring Freddy to the east of the starting zone. Ring Freddy can take off major chunks of your health when you're new to the mission, so having the right build to take him out quickly is vital to your success. Then it's back to the main enforcement squads. The normal MTs are pretty simple to defeat, but before you reach the wall, you're ambushed by two LCs, which will absolutely wreck you if you're not prepared. Using Assault Armor as they get in close should overload their systems, allowing you to take one out quickly, but either way, destroying them and heading into the wall will eventually get you to the HC battle. Here's the problem. Dying sends you right back to the start of the mission, because there are no checkpoints. So you have to defeat Ring Freddy, the LCs, and the HC without any checkpoints to complete the mission with the combat log obtained, and the HC puts up an insanely good fight, able to stagger a majority of your attacks if you're using a bipedal AC build. I was outclassed, outmatched, and very frustrated. It took far too long to defeat, and none of the deaths against it felt earned or satisfying. I didn't think, oh, I could have done that better when I died. I just thought, what a cheap boss fight. Beyond that though, the Cataphract mission I could have chosen instead gave me a lot more insight into the Raven mercenary we replaced, which sets up the defend the old spaceport battle in a couple of missions. Eliminate the enforcement squads, meanwhile, makes no reference to the old Raven, so there's no meaningful setup for the upcoming conflict. It hampered my experience going in to defend the old spaceport, and for that, this mission truly feels bottom of the barrel. But at number one, we have Coral Expert Denial, the Chapter 3 New Game Plus Plus All Mind mission that seems designed to make me hate it. Returning to the refueling base from one of our previous entries, our goal is to stop the corporations from making away with the Coral. To do this, we have a series of marked ships that appear across each portion of the level, and once they're destroyed, you move on to the next area, etc, etc. The real mission doesn't start until you reach the bridge. You'll have coral exports coming through the canyon, both on high and low ground, forcing the player to equip whatever sniper gear they have to have any chance of catching all the crafts. I recall the game telling me there were boost panels to help get from lower to higher ground, but I'm gonna be honest? I never saw them, and it made my life a living hell, especially as they start to spam groups of coral ships your way, and it only takes five ships escaping for the mission to be considered a failure. As such, if you get overwhelmed for even an instant, you'll lose your entire run and be forced to start from the very beginning again. No checkpoint at the bridge, it's back to the start, fuck you, don't pass go. It takes the concept of the defense missions from our number 4 entry, but instead flips it on its head. The only plus is that once the coral ships hit 0 AP, they explode, which can cause a chain reaction if used correctly. But the environment being so inconvenient, and the way it's so easy to miss some of the ships that go at faster speeds, just makes the likelihood of failure too high for me to enjoy. And the fact it's a New Game Plus Plus specific mission just makes me laugh because they decided to hide one of the most tedious, boring, uninspired missions in one of the final routes of the game. Coral Export Denial? 
More like fun gameplay denial. Am I right, gamers? And that's my list. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is the last of my Armored Core coverage, but I will be including Armored Core in some of my Soulsborne videos, just so I can keep talking about the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in to all three of the videos. I know they haven't done brilliantly, but I really enjoyed getting to gush about all of them. It was so much fun. If you guys are interested and want to support the channel, become a channel member. It's $4.99 a month. You get early access to my Tuesday videos when applicable, and you get a shout out in the description and at the end of the videos. Speaking of, my social links are on screen now. Feel free to follow where you feel comfortable. I recommend my Twitter, my Blue Sky, or my Discord. My Twitter is your best bet for getting any interactions with me, though, I'm not gonna lie. A massive shout out, as said, to my YouTube channel members for supporting me for another month. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And a massive shout out to my patrons over on on Patreon. You guys are also very much amazing. Thank you so much for the support. It has been wonderful creating all this content for you guys, and I can't wait to keep going. So, I'll see you guys next time. Adios.